Hey there, it's Linda Hayes. Do you want to be financially free and stop working? Let's talk with Sean. I'm here with him at the annual Real Estate Guys Investor Summit at Sea. Uh, at this event, I was excited to hear that you've actually used your rental properties uh, to pay off all your debt and retire at age 55. So Sean, a lot of people have a hard time investing when they first start. Can you talk about how you got started in real estate investing? Sure, Linda. Um, what we did was we pulled a $60,000 home equity line of credit on our primary residence and we used it as a down payment on a couple duplexes and uh, found that when you buy multifamily properties, oftentimes the person that's selling it's not giving you the whole truth and they, their tenants hadn't been paying their bills at all. So we had to evict the tenants and go in and new carpet, new paint and uh, raise the rents. And a year later, we found out it was worth a lot more. We found uh, forced depreciation, so we refinanced it and uh, used that extra cash to continue that process and kind of uh, rinsed and repeated until we got up to 20 doors. That's how we initially got started. So I understand you were up to 100, over 100 doors at one point. How did you get there? Okay. Um, what we did is uh, the laws in Washington State where we had our initial rentals changed and became landlord hostile. So we sold them all. 1031 into the Midwest and uh, our, those 20 doors, because of the price difference, it became 100 doors. And at that point, we had enough monthly passive income coming in to quit our day jobs and effectively retire. That freed up our uh, retirement funds that we had at our employer. And we took those and put them in self-directed 401ks and then bought 34 more doors. So at our peak, we were at 134 doors. So obviously real estate's been great for you financially, but obviously there must have been some sacrifices. Can you talk about the biggest ones you faced? Sure, Linda. Um, the biggest ones we faced is when we were first starting out, we tried to do everything ourselves because our margins were so slim. So after I worked a 12 hour day at work, oftentimes I would load equipment up on the truck and uh, drive to the neighboring community of Spokane, Washington and work on rentals till midnight and then come home and get up at 5 a.m. and go to work and keep repeating that. So the biggest sacrifice was family time. Although I did get some of that by uh, employing my kids as slave labor and paying them to mow the lawns of the rentals. So we talked about some of the sacrifices you faced. What about the challenges with real estate investing? Oh, the biggest one we've had is with staffing. When we started using property management and maintenance people to do the work and kind of backed away from the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, not everybody has the same work ethic that I do or, or ethics in general. And we've got past property managers embezzling and uh, maintenance guys double billing and overbilling for their time. Yeah, not a fun thing to do, but I guess it's uh, important to have some sort of uh, checks and balances in place. And I know you do a lot of time, spend a lot of time reviewing and going to check on your properties to ensure that things are going well. And if not, obviously hiring or finding a different property manager. I do. I go out uh, twice a year, usually for two weeks at a time and audit the books of my property manager as well as uh, check and see what the maintenance people are doing and uh, maybe paint a fourplex or two. Fantastic. At this event here, I know some people were talking about the challenges investing with their retirement funds. Um, if that's the case, is it something that we could talk about in a future video? Because I have a feeling it might be a long discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, obviously with anything that you do, there's lots of rules and regulations you have to follow and it, it would be better to do it. So Sean, now that you're financially free, what goals do you have? What's next? Um, now that we're financially free, we're trying to enjoy life a little bit more. Um, we have all of our properties under third party property management. Um, we bring in more than we spend. So as those reserves build up, we'll probably continue buying apartment buildings into the future. And the eventual goal is to leave all of the buildings to our kids upon our passing. So we can create some generational wealth and they can enjoy the fruits of our labor. 
Do you want to meet fantastic investors like Sean and even Robert Helms, who have tons of experience that they're completely willing to share? Well, you can do that at the annual Investor Summit at Sea. The June 2025th one is all planned out, and we're going to be on the same ship as we were this year. If you want more details on that, check out the Real Estate Guys Radio website. And also, if you want to see more about what the 2024 experience was like, click here. As many of you know, I also invest in Belize as well as in Canada. And I do Belize trips for people that are thinking of either moving here or investing. And I have one coming up this weekend where I've partnered with Robert Helms on his Belize Discovery Tour, which covers San Pedro. After that, we head to Placencia. Check out more details on my channel about the next Belize Discovery Tour coming up in December.